Hi students, we are going to be doing energy next. So just listen and follow along as I go through your notes. Okay, so whenever work is done, energy is transformed or is transferred from one system to another. Energy is the capacity to do work. All right, so we can take that idea, right? Capacity to do work. That's what energy means. Work is when an object is moved a distance against an opposing force of motion. So the man riding the bike. The bike wants to stay still, but the man is moving the bike. Therefore, he is doing work. Energy is measured in joules. This is our unit that we're going to be using when we talk about energy. Potential energy is our first type of energy. Potential energy is sometimes called energy of position. Position, right, means where it is because it results from the relative positions of objects in a system. So that means by position, right, you could be up here or you could be down there. That's what we mean by position. Where is the object located? So potential energy is the energy that an object has because of its position, shape, or condition of the object. So some examples. Right? Any object that is stretched or compressed is said to have elastic potential energy. Right? We call a rubber band an elastic. He's pulling it back and if you've ever done this before, you know that when you let it go, the rubber band's going to snap forward. Another one that we're really going to be focusing on is gravitational potential energy. Note that word gravity. Right? What comes up must go down. So what that means is we know that this roller coaster is going to go down the hill. It has gravitational potential energy. If the roller coaster was down here, it does not have gravitational potential energy because it's on the ground, right? It's not using gravity to go anywhere. Whereas this one at the top is going to use gravity to move or do work. So therefore it has energy. Okay, so if we look at this example, gravitational potential energy depends on both mass and height. So there's that unit joules, that J, right, means joules. If you look at your ball here, down at the ground, it has zero joules because it has no energy. Up here, it has 50 joules because it has potential energy, right? It's, it's off the ground. It can use gravity in order to move. So we say it has potential energy. So potential energy, to figure out how we get that 50 joules, we look at the mass times the gravity, also known as free fall acceleration, and the height that the ball is at. And we just multiply them together. All right, so let's do a practice problem. So a 65 kilogram rock climber ascends a cliff. What is the climber's gravitational potential energy at a point 35 meters above the base of the cliff. So we have gravitational potential energy is mass times gravity times height. Well, I know my mass is 65 kilograms. I know my gravity, so Earth's gravity, which you probably learned while uh, you were doing your stations, is 9.8 meters per second squared. Some of your problems will not tell you that, so you just need to memorize that, right? So I know my gravity is 9.8, and I know my height is 35 meters. And now I multiply that straight across, so I get 65 times 9.8 times 35 gives me 22,200 and 95 joules. Generally, energy is big numbers, like in the tens and hundreds of thousands, so don't get nervous if you're getting big numbers. Our next type of energy is called kinetic energy. So kinetic is, is the science word. Kinetic means motion. It means moving. Objects with potential energy are not actively moving, 
you're just looking at where they are to determine if they have energy. Kinetic energy, they're actually moving. So kinetic energy depends on mass and the speed of an object. So because the object is moving, we have to look at its speed. So our equation for kinetic energy is one half times the mass times our speed squared. So one half mv, that's a v, sorry, squared. All right, so let's do a practice problem here. What is the kinetic energy of a 44 uh, kilogram cheetah running at 31 meters per second? Well, kinetic energy equals 1 half mv squared. So I have my mass. It's 44 kilograms. I have my velocity. Oops. Is at 31 meters per second. And I'm going to square that. So I'm going to do the square first. So I'm going to do 31 times 31. And I'm going to get 961. And I'm going to times that by 44. And I get 42,284 joules. Again, big numbers. Okay, some other forms of energy. We can have mechanical energy. Uh, like windmills are a great example of mechanical energy. We can have chemical energy. We're going to be getting into chemistry next, and we'll learn more about chemical energy. But this is uh, energy that happens at the atomic level, or the, the particle level that atoms are made at, that matter is made out of. Plants use photosynthesis, for example. If you were in biology with me last year, we talked a little about photosynthesis. Right? That's an example of chemical energy energy. And our sun works by nuclear fusion, which it makes great amounts of energy. That's why our sun is so strong. Uh, we can have electrical fields. That's how electricity works. And magnetism, too, if you've ever used magnets. That is a form of electric, electrical field energy. And <clears throat> ultraviolet radiation, right? So we talk about UV light, right, is over here where the sun is, right? So we talk about the sun and radiation like we did before. That's a type, of a type of energy. We call those electromagnetic waves. Your cell phones, right? We talk about your cell phones working by radiation, kind of work on this type of energy. If you ever had an x-ray, it's over here. Uh, this increases as energy as you go this way. So like your cell phones have a low amount of energy. They're not dangerous. But x-rays and the sun, once you start getting over here, they have very high energy fields and they can be dangerous to the human body.